Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, HTM here, and in today's video, we'll be discussing ESO Update 35, the new patch headed to the Elder Scrolls Online in late August for PC, early September for consoles. Now there's definitely a lot to dive into in this patch, but one of the most important changes, in my opinion, is the nerf to the Oaken Soul Ring. The new one bar mythic item that many players, including myself, have been using to push through more difficult PvE content with simple and powerful one bar builds, but has also been used and abused to create annoying one-shot gankers, whip spammers, and other oppressive builds in PvP content. Now myself and many other ESO players believe that this item more than any other in the past shows exactly why sometimes PvE content and PvP content needs to have individual balancing, not just a one-size-fits-all approach. And while the devs' approach so far has been a blanket nerf to Oaken Soul, which will end up fixing some of those PvP issues, at the same time, it will also leave many PvE players struggling more than they were previously to complete content, which goes against the whole premise of this mythic item to begin with, and again shows why a more delicate and thoughtful balancing approach is needed instead. And that said, I think I have a simple fix for this, which I believe is already available in-game and wouldn't be that hard to implement. So let's jump right into it. All right, so first let's talk about the stats for the Oaken Soul Ring and the proposed nerf which was patched into the PTS last week. Many of the basic buffs that were part of the Oaken Soul Ring have remained the same in the new Update 35 version of the Mythic. This includes Major Brutality and Major Sorcery for weapon and spell damage, then Major Savagery and Major Prophecy for increased critical chance. You also have Major Resolve for increased resistance, and the Minor Recovery buffs, Minor Fortitude, Minor Endurance, Minor Intellect. Those all increase your Health Recovery, Stamina Recovery, Magical Recovery, respectively. Those have not changed, those are kind of like the baseline buffs, I believe, of the Oaken Soul and what it provides. But now let's get into what has changed, where I disagree, and where I think we could see some better changes. First up, there actually was a new buff added in the Update 35 PTS. That being minor mending, this increases your healing done. I am actually okay with this addition. I think it's not very impactful in PvE content, so it's probably fine. I feel like it is a very good addition for PvP builds who want to make use of this mythic item. The extra healing should definitely make a difference, especially in like no CP battlegrounds, for instance. I'm actually fine with this addition. I think it's a good buff to add, and it's not overtuned in any specific type of content. Now, next, there is the major protection buff, which is a 10% damage reduction bonus which the developers then nerfed down to the minor protection buff, which is a 5% damage reduction bonus. Now, this is the first change that I actually really disagree with, having played with both the Update 34 version of Oaken Soul and the current PTS Update 35 version. Losing that major protection buff is going to be rough, more so for new and less experienced players, actually, which we know is the target audience for this mythic item. Major protection actually helps those players because it allows them to take less damage in more difficult encounters, especially veteran mode content. Now, if you're familiar at all with normal versus veteran modes and ESO and how those work, there is a huge damage spike when going from a normal mode, dungeon, trial, arena, up to the veteran mode. In most cases, the difference is huge. There's very little hand-holding once you step up to veteran ranks in ESO. And one of the first things that happens usually to new players when they either step foot into that veteran arena, that veteran dungeon, or trial, is that they die. And they die a lot. One of the problems with ESO is actually that there's not a lot of middle ground, uh, which is a great topic for another video, actually. But from what I've seen, major protection for those new players especially has been a big help with that when they're utilizing the Oak and Soul Ring. Also, Major Protection, now that it only reduces 10% instead of the old 30% damage reduction, it's also not overtuned in PvP either. Sets like stackable 30% damage reduction from Iron Blood were what was actually creating unkillable PvP builds, not the Oaken Soul Ring. So even in PvP, Major Protection will help players survive like a few extra hits without being one-shotted by a better player. It's not overpowered, but it definitely does help close that skill gap just a bit more, which is the whole purpose of this mythic item in the first place. So major protection, in my opinion, needs to stay, keep it on. Let's move on to the most powerful buffs on Oaken Soul, which are Major Berserk for 10% damage done, Major Courage, which adds about 430 weapon and spell damage, Major Heroism for a ton of extra ultimate generation, and the Major Force buff, for 20% additional critical damage. Now, most of the player base in ESO will agree that these buffs are powerful, 
and that they're actually overpowered in one specific instance, and that is in PvP. I think rightfully so, the dev team looked at the results in PvP for the High Isle chapter and said, nope, we need to change the meta here. Some of these Oaken Soul PvP builds are ridiculously strong, and so they decided to nerf those effects down to their minor versions. I actually agree with this change. I think it's the right change to make, but it's only right, in my opinion, for PvP content. Going on to test those changes in PvE on the Update 35 PTS has been extremely bad. First, I will say it's hard to get a true test of the power to the Oaken Soul Ring here because the devs changed so much at once. I mean, they nerfed class skills, they nerfed passive damage, they nerfed light and heavy attacks, they nerfed dot damage while also massively increasing effect durations. So it's really hard to give accurate feedback in this environment because literally everything changed at once. But that aside, one bar builds in the update 35 PTS are in a much worse position than they have ever been in the past, even when there was no Oaken Soul Ring at all. Now, why is that? Well, the main reason is that damage has gone down significantly, almost down to what it was several patches ago. I mean, before we had like base character stats buffed, before we had the higher weapon and spell damage numbers uh, that we have now. And also a major issue is that dots are significantly nerfed in update 35 as well, which is also bad for one bar builds because you now need to run at least four, maybe five dots at once for them to even be worth using in the first place, which of course, is impossible on the one bar build because you only have room for five skills and your ultimate. I did one test uh, where I tested my one bar Magicka Sorcerer, the infinity build. Now this is a more defensive health recovery focused build. It's for new players, it's to help them survive. It felt really good with the Oaken Soul Ring uh, in the High Isle chapter. But in my test against just a world boss, for example, I lost almost 40% of my DPS. I went from taking about three minutes to kill this world boss to five minutes. And on my Stamina Nightblade one bar build, the Brawler setup, which I recently updated for the High Isle chapter as well, I tested that out on the Update 35 PTS. Uh, and the damage was so low, I really could not do VMA the way I normally do. My PvE DPS was so much lower that I actually decided to go back to running two full skill bars with this build, including four dots on the back bar, and switch out Oaken Soul for the Sea Serpent's Coil. And even then, after I made all these adjustments, I still had less damage than my one bar Oaken Soul build had in the High Isle chapter. So again, while making Berserk, Courage, and Heroism into their minor versions is actually a good solution for PvP builds, it absolutely destroys a lot of PvE builds that players were able to make in Update 34, where those major buffs specifically were helping newer players push themselves into more challenging veteran rank content, which is the whole purpose of the mythic item to begin with. So what then is the solution here? Well, I think it's already being used in game and it should be an easy switch over for Oaken Soul to keep its PvE power, but limit its abuse in PvP. The solution I would like to see implemented for the Oaken Soul Ring in ESO is something called Battle Spirit. And if you don't know what Battle Spirit is, it's basically an effect that gets placed on your character in any PvP environment, whether it's Cyrodiil, Imperial City, Battlegrounds, or even Dueling. Uh, you have the Battle Spirit buff added to your character. Now, Battle Spirit does have some of its own effects, like reducing your damage, reducing your healing. It also reduces the size of damage shields and so on to make PvP a little bit more controlled, a bit less chaotic. But Battle Spirit has also been used recently on sets in the game to trigger effects. And this is where I think it could be used to solve the Oaken Soul balance issue and also other PvE slash PvP balance issues for other sets as they appear. Now there is a pretty good example of this already, I think in the set that's called Rallying Cry. This has been actually in the game for a while now. If you look at the five piece bonus here, it says while Battle Spirit is active. So in other words, while you are in PvP content, you get some specific effects. This set gives you like weapon and spell damage and critical resistance when you critically heal yourself or a target. So in this case, we have an example of a set bonus that has a content-based or a content-specific trigger that is Battle Spirit. So in essence, in PvP content, this set effect does something, and in PvE content, it does nothing. Again, based on the trigger of Battle Spirit being active or being not active. Now, I would love to see the same type of trigger applied to the bonuses of the Oaken Soul Ring. Here is how I would do it. 
First, I would have base effects that are always active no matter what. This would include major brutality, major sorcery, major prophecy, major savagery, major resolve, the armor buff, and then the minor recovery buffs. We already looked at this. The new minor mending, which was also added in update 35. All of these are, are fine, like baseline effects that I think are good on this ring no matter what content you're in. Then for the final four buffs in question, these would follow the battle spirit trigger. So when Battle Spirit is active, you gain permanent Minor Heroism, Minor Berserk, Minor Courage, Minor Force. And finally, if Battle Spirit is not active, then you gain the Major versions. Major Heroism, Major Berserk, Major Courage, and Major Force. So obviously the tooltip is a bit longer in this version of the Mythic, but I think this fully addresses all the balance issues of this item, keeping it from creating overpowered builds in PvP, while also helping it serve its intended purpose in PvE, which is to raise the floor for players with accessibility concerns. Now finally, I will say that I don't think most item sets in ESO need to be balanced to this level. If they were, I think that's way too much work for a relatively small design team to balance all the sets, where we were at like 500 plus item sets in the game already. Doing that type of extensive balancing work is way too much to put onto the design team, so I would really only advise this approach, this sort of battle spirit triggered PVP slash PVE balancing for just a few mythic items and maybe a few monster sets. The idea here is to not have perfect balance because that's impossible. Instead, the idea should be to have fun, engaging and powerful sets that are enjoyable for players to use. And if it's so powerful that it's broken in some aspect of the game, let's say it's broken in PvP, just make it function differently in PvP through Battle Spirit. Don't take it away from every player and every type of content in the game. Balance it differently in each one. But that, of course, is my opinion. Like I said, I think this would work really well for the Oaken Soul Ring. If you have any ideas of your own, make sure to let us know those in the comments section below. Also, if you've been on PTS Update 35, please leave your experiences. If you tested out the Oaken Soul Ring, for example, developers need as much hands-on feedback as possible. So if you can post your DPS numbers, the time it took you to complete content, something like that, the more information, the better. But that's it. Thank you all again for watching, and I will see you around in the next video. Hey everybody, I know that things have been crazy lately in ESO, but one thing that even the developers themselves have noted recently is that they wish they could have created a more in-depth tutorial for newer players getting started in the game. So if you're currently struggling in ESO or you're confused about your gear or your stats or your build, you're definitely not alone. It actually took me about six months to a year of teaching myself how the game really worked before I could start making builds that were actually fun and effective and let me play the way I wanted to play. Well, today I'm excited to let you know that I finally put down my system for creating builds into a simple step-by-step -step guide that you can now use to create your own fun and powerful builds yourself. We're calling this the ESO Zero to Hero Academy and it's being hosted through Podia, which is an amazing online learning platform. So far, our ultimate build guide has over 25 lessons and over two hours of video content designed to take you from a beginner to a master theory crafter, not in months like it took me, but in just a few hours. We're always updating and tweaking the guides based on combat changes as well, so no worries there. And we're actually in the process of creating audio-only versions of the content as well, in case you want to listen on the go like a podcast. So if that sounds good to you, just click on the link down below to get started. And thanks again for watching.